Larry Silverstein, a key figure in the Jewish crime network, dual Israeli citizen and World Trade Center leaseholder, who pocketed $4 billion for the attacks of 9-11. Somehow, Silverstein had the mysterious foresight to insure both of the towers with an insurance policy specifically covering acts of terrorism just weeks before September 11, 2001. But things get more absurd than this. Enter p -Tech. The Israeli Mossad also had their hands in the most sensitive computer networks in the U.S. government through a little-known firm called p 9-11 was also a computer crime. America's security apparatus and infrastructure would have reacted to the hijacking, then scrambled fighter jets and would have eliminated the threats to thousands of Americans. Unfortunately, most of the critical computer systems were run by p -Tech. This left gaping holes in the communication networks and interoperability between the computer systems which would allow a hijacker to cause severe miscommunication and delay any reaction to the real-time hijacking. Keep in mind, there were drills going on of flights crashing into buildings on 9-11, as well as other drills, such as Operation Northern Vigilance, Operation Vigilant Guardian, Operation Northern Guardian and Operation Vigilant Warrior. Joe Bergantino, a reporter for WBZ-TV's investigative team, was torn. He could risk breaking a story based on months of work investigating a software firm linked to terrorism or heed the government's demand to hold the story for national security reasons. In mid-June, Bergantino received a tip from a woman in New York who suspected that p -Tech a computer software company in Quincy, Massachusetts, had ties to terrorists. p -Tech specialized in developing software that manages information contained in computer networks. Bergantino's investigation revealed that p -Tech's clients included many federal government agencies, including the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Naval Air Command, Congress, the Department of Energy, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, and the Internal Revenue Service, as well as NATO, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and moreover, the Secret Service, and even the White House. It is important to understand the difference between the term Jews, Hebrews, and Zionists. The majority of the world's Jewish population are honest, caring, honorable people who practice Judaism, follow religious tradition, and embrace good moral values. The term Hebrew refers to the Hebrew language. It also refers to the Hebrew people who are the ethnic descendants of the original 12 tribes of Israel. The term Zionist refers to political extremists. Zionists believe that the Hebrews are God's chosen race of people and that the Hebrews have a right to the land of the Muslim Palestinians. Why? Because according to the Bible, God said so. These Zionist extremists represent only a small minority of Jews and Hebrews. Christians who support Israel's theft of Palestinian land are called Christian Zionist extremists. Their goal is to help fulfill the prophecies of the Bible story. Countless millions of Americans are reading a series of novels called Left Behind. They're topping bestseller lists all over the country, and they're being made into movies. They chronicle apocalyptic times. The setting is the 21st century, complete with warplanes and TV correspondence. This is Buck Williams reporting live from Israel. I am standing in the middle of an all-out attack. But the plot is ripped from the pages of the Bible. So it all winds up here in Israel, where according to the book of Revelations, the final battle in the history of the future will be fought on this ancient battleground in northern Israel called Armageddon. It will follow seven years of tribulation during which the earth will be shaken by such disasters that previous human history will seem like a day in the country. The 
media has misled the public into believing that Queen Elizabeth II is a symbolic ceremonial figurehead with little or no real power, that she is a cold but harmless old relic who passes her time sipping tea at the palace. Nothing could be further from the truth. As British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II is the wealthiest, most powerful person on earth. She embodies the crown and supreme world power. Presidents of the United States are forbidden any title of nobility and are subservient to the monarch. The U.S. President is Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces based at Camp David, which is known to insiders as Camp King David. Prime Ministers in Commonwealth nations like Canada and Australia are also subservient representatives of the British King or Queen. They are her spokesmen. The Governor Generals of the Queen's Commonwealth nations represent and exercise the Queen's power on her behalf. What the general public doesn't realize is that their leaders are only representatives of the monarch and do not possess the power. They exercise the power. They do not reign, they rule. The monarch, on the other hand, reigns but does not rule, possesses the power but does not exercise it. By delegating her powers instead of exercising her powers, the queen is left safely outside and above the conflicts and divisions of the political process. She is protected from becoming a target of political hostilities. Meanwhile, the general public is kept in the dark about the true powers that the Queen actually possesses, powers that she delegates but has not yet chosen to exercise. So what exactly are these powers that the Queen possesses but has not chosen to exercise? Her powers include the power to choose the Prime Minister and to dismiss the Prime Minister through her Governor General, the power to dismiss ministers and the government, the power to dissolve Parliament and call new elections. The power to refuse legislation passed by Parliament. The power to command the armed forces and raise a personal militia. She has the power to read confidential government documents and intelligence reports. The power to declare a state of emergency and issue proclamations. She has the power to call elections and enact laws in Her Majesty's name. Few people realize that not a single law is passed without the Queen's consent. She has the power to exercise Crown prerogatives, which means the Queen can declare war through her Prime Minister without even the agreement of Parliament. She has the power to grant and bestow titles and honors like Sir, the power to pardon convicted criminals. So why has the Queen been allowed to legally possess all of these supreme powers? For the sake of tradition? What exactly is the meaning of the term the crown? The crown is defined as executive powers exercised in the name of the monarch. The actual crown itself worn by the monarch is a symbol of the queen's executive powers. The Parliamentary Oaths Act of 1866 requires all leaders of 54 Commonwealth nations to swear an oath of loyalty to the queen, not to the people who elected them. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. Those who do not swear allegiance to the Queen are deemed unfit for office, including the Prime Minister, police, military, judges, legislators, lawyers, and public servants. New citizens to the Queen's Commonwealth nations must swear allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen. Public land in the Queen's colonies like Canada is called Crown Land and includes Aboriginal land. Government corporations are called Crown Corporations. The Central Bank of Canada and the Canadian Mint are Crown Corporations independent of most government controls. Neither Canada nor Australia, two huge and independent countries in their own right, has dispensed with her services as their head of state. Forms, stationery and printing are printed by the Queen's printer. Canadian warships are called HMCS, Her Majesty's Canadian Ship, and in Australia they're called HMAS, Her Majesty's Australian Ship. Canada's National Police Force is called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. All government contracts are between a company or individual and Her Majesty. 
Court summons are issued in the name of the Queen, and all public inquiries are called royal commissions. Commonwealth money carries the Queen's image worldwide as a reminder of her authority. The Queen is the lifetime hereditary head of state of Great Britain and her colonies and is unelected and unaccountable. It is against the law to advocate the abolition of the monarchy.